We have a 2001 Eurovan, and the customer's complaint is the traction control light and the ABS and the airbag light is on. We've done some preliminary checks already. I decided it might be video worthy, so I started videoing. We'll uh, show you what codes we got and go from there. There's a little bit of a goofy starter noise there. Obviously the ABS light is on, traction light, airbag light, and this is a ESP van. It's got ESP there, and just I noticed uh, during my preliminary checks the horn doesn't work. <clears throat> we'll get some codes out of it. Here's the auto scan that we did earlier, and we are have the engine there. Let me scroll down. And it says, powertrain data bus, missing message from ABS controller. And engine start blocked by immobilizer. We usually just ignore that code. This car is not having an immobilizer problem. Uh, inside the auto trans, it's got a shifter, shift selector, locking solenoid, opener short to ground, and an ABS control module, no communications. And then, the ABS controller, we have powertrain data bus, missing message from steering angle sensor. And then in the airbag controller, we have a airbag igniter, driver side N85, resistance too high, trouble code. And then in the instrument cluster, ABS control module, no communications intermittent. CAN gateway, ABS control module, no communications, steering angle sensor, no communication. So, <clears throat> looks like the ABS module is not communicating intermittently, and we see that a lot on Passats, and that's almost always the ABS module itself. Uh, so, I would guess that's the same thing on this one, but what we have to eliminate first is the steering angle sensor and the clock spring problem. Uh, obviously, I showed you this thing has no horn. Horn's not working, and so and we have an airbag code. So with the horn not working, the airbag code, there's a good chance the clock spring's no good. Uh, the, uh, the ESP cars, the clock spring has the steering angle sensor built into it. It's a very expensive part with a uh, module built in to communicate on a data bus network. So maybe if we eliminate that problem first, it will fix the ABS trouble code also. Um, no way to know that without actually doing it. But uh, from this point uh, I want to show you the VAGCOM and the steering angle sensor. So VAGCOM. And ABS module. Measuring blocks. There's our wheel speed sensors. Great stuff. Engine speed. Steering angle sensor. I'm if you group one there. Now I'm going to start turn the wheel here. <clears throat> and I don't think you could probably see that at the same time. Turning the wheel has no effect on the steering angle sensor at all. So Obviously, a completely inoperative steering angle sensor, completely inoperative horn, airbag trouble code. Most likely, we have a bad clock spring. We will uh, pull up a wiring schematic and take a look, pull this apart here, and see what uh, we can figure out. Check powers, grounds, see if there's any signal coming out of it. Maybe check, put an oscilloscope on the communi data communication wires and uh, go from there. Just the fact that the horn ain't working and the steering angle sensor isn't showing any reading on the scan tool and that the airbag has a trouble code may be enough to condemn the clock, clock spring, but it's a very expensive part. It's almost $490, maybe $500. Um, so we don't want to make a wrong diagnosis 
so we've got to be 100% sure. So we'll pull this apart and make some checks in there. <clears throat> Want to give a quick tour of what we're dealing with here in the disassembly for a diagnosis. The, uh, had to pull the steering wheel off, clamshell off the top and bottom, and kick panel out. The reason we had to pull the kick panel is because uh, this wire right here comes around here to this device here. Um, and that's just simply clipped onto a uh, cable that's there at the ignition switch. Just want to see inside this, see what this is. like one big fat capacitor. There's no chips in here. Just the connector for the wires and one big capacitor. I have already finished the diagnosis on this and I know what's wrong with it now. It was the clock spring just as I thought but I want to go over the diagnostic process to share that with you guys. Uh, there are three separate wires coming out of the clock spring. This one here. Three separate groups of wires. This one this one which is yellow and this one but obviously the yellow one is the airbag and I have the schematic for the airbag here and it shows the driver side airbag going through a clock spring and then both these wires simply go to the computer here solid state airbag module behind the center of the dash now I haven't pulled this out but I can unplug right here and I can ohm check through here to here where it plugs in and based on our steering wheel these wires go to the airbag itself and in position one and two here I don't know if those, that's the position actually labeled on there but I'm calling it one and two yeah it is one and two there is a one there and based on the position for the steering wheel, uh, so I've already diagnosed this. I had to keep moving, I, but I wanted to definitely show you the diagnostic process. There are three connectors here on the clock spring. I understand that the clock spring has the steering wheel position sensor integrated into it. So you have an airbag connector, you have a horn connector, and you have the, obviously this one's yellow and that's the airbag. And right here on the wiring schematic we have the driver's side airbag passing through the clock spring and then it just simply goes straight to the computer. And our wire colors are green and red and red. And there we have green and red and red. So we simply ohm check from there into this connector here. This connector hooks to the uh, to here and then this hooks to the airbag so since these wires right here go to position one and two you can just see the one there it's only, it doesn't have a two but you can see position one and then two is right next to it so you can ohm check between here and there and there should be con uh, this does seem to have 0.5 volts riding on both these wires I should probably show that. Let me go ahead and do that. So I have my negative lead hooked here, my meter sitting there, my positive lead in my hand. I touch it right there with the key on, of course, and I get 0.4 volts. Now that's on one side. Now I touch the other side and I got 0.5 volts. So basically this runs half a volt on both these wires. Be careful doing this. Don't have the airbag bag plugged in when you do this. I don't know if that would deploy the airbag or not, but you definitely don't want to mess around with it. So as we plug into this, that 0.5 volts should pass to this connector. There we go. So now that that's plugged in, that 0.5 volts should be making it through the clock spring to there, and it's not and I've ohm checked this as well. I started off ohm checking it but then I decided to see if there was a reference voltage on it 
and there was a there was 0.5 volts so that 0.5 volts should be making it to pin one and two there I've also ohm checked between the horn connector here and here but did you determine which ones are the horn connector by here and it's p position four and five and I've ohm checked from four and five here to right here and I get no continuity there either so let me unplug that and I'll be right back so I still have the key on and I've back probed with the t-pin on one side of this now I'm going to back probe the other side so I've put a t-pin in this one back probed it and I'm going to back probe the other one and then I'm just going to short the two of them together and the horn does blow so obviously that means the clock spring is bad there's probably some additional checks I would need to do with regards to the steering wheel position sensor but I'm 100% convinced that this clock spring is bad hopefully uh, replacing it since it is a very expensive part will fix the steering wheel position sensor also but uh, that's as far as I'm going with this diagnosis I will probably show you a couple things when I uh, after we install the new clock spring we have received our new clock spring Looks so like calls it a ring it's an expensive thing that's for sure it is uh, 500 over $500 expensive for for what it is I just want to show a check of it with it good uh, because my check was to check for I found 0.5 volts on these wires and my check was to check there for that 0.5 volts going to the airbag and uh, I did not have continuity through there passing that 0.5 volts through so I want to show it with it uh, the good one on there as a known good check so I have the meter sitting there and I'm gonna reach inside there and touch the prong and now I have the 0.5 volts passing through check the second one and 4.4 very similar to the other one and the next two wires uh, one of them should have by next two I'm counting these one two three four five um, the next one should have horn voltage on it so as I touch that I have 11.3 volts and I'm gonna get a tool to where I can short across those real quick and I think it'd be pretty important to After we get the steering wheel position sensor stuff plugged in, we'll hook a scan tool to it, turn the wheel and demonstrate that. Well, we just finished up the repairs on this and I started it up and mo to move it out of the bay. And when I did, the CPC light wasn't on. I don't know why it's on now. What, what, we, ju what we had just a second ago was the airbag light. And I'm gonna clear those and hopefully that'll turn the lights off have to look into that one it wasn't on a second ago so we'll go in the airbag and it had an airbag igniter code in the meantime it's triggered a supply voltage code we did have the battery go dead at one point on there maybe that's why our EDC light is on so Clear these. And the code didn't reoccur immediately. We'll go out, go back in, make sure. Didn't reoccur. Our light's still on though. We need to escape out of here. And our light went out when we escaped out. Now for the ABS code. So over to the 
computer, laptop computer for VAGCOM. And we are communicating now. And fault codes, steering angle sensor, memory of image controller, control module incorrectly coded. Uh, we're going to clear those codes and see what happens. Control module incorrectly coded. All right, so the control module incorrectly coded trouble code has reoccurred, and it's like our coding says zeros should have a number there. Let's look it up and see if there was a because uh, I did an auto scan on this vehicle. Let's see if there was a uh, if there was coding in there before. There's our ABS module and our coding was 06639. So let's see if we can get uh, that 00, that 06639 to go into there. 06639. And it says coding accepted after a specific login is carried out. So it's probably not going to accept it. I guess I'll try anyway. And it did not put a number in there, so I would assume that it didn't accept it. Go to the login, and usually VAGCOM will be good and tell us what it is. Uh, 40168 is for basic settings enabling, but that doesn't say for coding enabling. Uh, let me go to Rostec site real quick and see if it shows me what the, the login is. Okay, so we're at the Rostec site and it says VW Transporter Brake Electronics with Bosch 5.3 ESP. I do have Bosch uh, 5.3 ESP. How do I know that? Well, this is how. On our auto scan, it shows ESP 5.3. So then we'll um, uh, go back to Ross Tech and it shows how to do it. After login is carried out, you need to recode it. Uh, 07669 is the login code. And there's some notes down here uh, that it says. Uh, you guys can read that on their site, but uh, sometimes you need to put a non-zero workshop code in the coding screen, such as one, two, three, four. Anything non-zero, like one, would probably work, but one, two, three, four is what they're suggesting there, so that's what I'm going to use. So we'll go try and code it. So our our coding is zero zero. I'm sorry, zero six six three nine. That matches what was on our uh, auto scan, and our login is zero seven six six nine. So we go to login, and we log in with 07669, click do it, and then put our coding in, and our coding was 06639. And it says to put a workshop code in there, and I'm just going to use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Click do it, and it accepted it. It put it in the um, soft coding there. So we have to run the um, basic settings, I'm sorry, the steering wheel angle, angle sensor basic setting. In order to do that, I know we need to log in for that. And that login is right there, 40168, 168, oops, 40168. Do it and then basic settings, steering wheel angle sensor alignment, and it aligned it okay. And we click done go back and we check our fault codes and no codes. Uh, I do want to look at the measuring blocks real quick here for the steering wheel alignment or steering wheel angle sensor to confirm that it works. There it is 
right there and I'll turn the steering wheel and it does work. We have coded the module and run the basic settings for the steering wheel position sensor alignment and the ABS light is still on. Uh, we, uh, sometimes it'll stay on when you're scanning the, the module. We still have the scan tool connected to the module so we'll go ahead and log out of that and the, the red brake light went off but these did not and from experience you have to drive the car for the steering wheel position sensor alignment to finalize. I don't know how to put it in good words but um, uh, probably driving the car will make this go out so we'll take it for a quick road test and then bring it back. We finished up the road test. Uh, it's a, kind of a snowy day today. If you can see those snowflakes or not. Kind of see them a little bit. Windows are all fogged up, but driving it did make the light go out. We have a dash free of ABS lights, airbag lights, check engine lights. If you learned anything from this video, feel free to like and subscribe and visit my website at www.kansascitytdi.com. Bye-bye.